Okay. Hi, thanks for the introduction. Uh, today I'll be talking about my work on the urinary microbiome and lower urinary tract symptoms in men. So this is work I did as a graduate student at Oregon Health and Science University, uh, but now I'm a postdoc at Yale University. All right, so over a third of men over the age of 50 experience some type of lower urinary tract symptom, which I'm going to refer to as LUTs. Uh, LUTs is characterized by issues with the storage and voiding of urine. So symptoms can include frequent trips to the restroom um, or even pushing or straining when urinating. Uh, LUTs is largely understood to be caused by an enlarged prostate. However, many researchers now believe bacteria in the bladder could potentially play a role. Uh, and that's because over the past decade or so, researchers have found evidence of bacteria in the bladder of adults, um, even in the absence of an infection, such as a urinary tract infection. And this has been discovered through both culturing and sequencing. And one of the many things they found is that men and women are actually colonized by different types of bacteria. And unlike the majority of uh, medical studies, uh, most initial studies of the urinary microbiome have actually been focused on women. So not only have researchers found that there's bacteria in urine, but they've also found that the composition of the urinary microbiome has some associations with certain diseases and disorders. For example, in women, uh, many have found differences in the urinary microbiome composition between those with urgency urinary incontinence uh, and overactive bladder, as well as with women uh, with and without recurrent UTIs. Uh, in men, however, researchers have seen differences in the bacteria present in those with chronic kidney stones and also those with LUTs. Uh, however, it's important to note that no large-scale urinary microbiome studies have been undertaken in men. Uh, and this is, we think this is necessary to understand the heterogeneity of the male urinary microbiome, as well as learn about important covariates that's needed to inform uh, future studies. So on the left is a brief overview of everything I just mentioned. Uh, and for this study, Urine samples were collected from 500 men from the osteoporotic fractures in men study, also known as the Mr. Oz cohort. Uh, this is a large longitudinal study of older men. Uh, and LUTs was assessed using the International Prostate Symptom Score. So this is a validated questionnaire that's used to evaluate symptoms. Uh, urine samples underwent 16S ribosomal RNA gene sequencing and bacterial composition was done using R. Uh, here's an overview of the clinical characteristics of our cohort. So you can see here that 475 men uh, successfully generated data. Um, 265 of those men had no or mild LUTs, while 210 had moderate to severe LUTs. When examining the two groups, uh, you can see that the men with moderate to severe LUTs um, are significantly older, as well as had higher rates of prostatitis, um, which is uh, kind of uh, an inflamed prostate. Um, and higher rates of uh, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, which is an enlarged prostate. Uh, so here's an overview of the sequencing data. Um, I'm showing a stacked bar plot that has all of our samples on the X and on the Y um, is uh, the relative abundance of each um, phylum. And so here I'm really just showing that similar to other microbiomes in the human body, the male urinary microbiome is also very heterogeneous. The first question we asked with this data um, are, was, do clinical characteristics have any association with the urinary microbiome? Uh, first, we examined alpha diversity, and we found that uh, BPH, or benign prosthetic hyperplasia, was significantly associated with the Shannon, Inver Simpson, and Pilu indices. When we take a closer look, we can see that the alpha diversity of the men with BPH was higher than the men without BPH. And we did not find any other significant associations with age, BMI, diabetes, prostatitis, or prostate cancer. Uh, so next we investigated beta diversity and we found that both age and BMI were significantly associated with all three beta diversity metrics that we tested. Uh, so this tells me that men um, of a similar age or BMI will have a much more similar urinary microbiome composition than compared to men at different ages or different BMIs. Uh, we found this particularly exciting because this has not previously been described in the male urinary microbiome. Oh. <laughs> uh, so using the diversity metrics, we have a broad overview of the male urinary microbiome, but we next wanted to examine specific taxa. So we used high sensitivity pattern discovery in large paired multiomic data sets called HALA. This is actually um, a program created by Kurt Curtis Huttenhauer, who I think is like the next keynote speaker. 
Um, and what we found is that um, at the genus level, uh, this bacteria called Dialister was significantly associated with BMI. So here I'm showing the BMI grouping um, separated uh, into healthy weight, overweight, and obese. And on the X are the proportion of samples that contain Dialister. So I'm showing that as BMI increases, we see a higher percentage of men with Dialister in their urinary microbiomes. Um, and to my knowledge, this hasn't been found in the urinary microbiome before. However, Dialister is, has been studied in the gut microbiome and is known to have relationships to higher uh, BMI and an inability to lose weight. So it's really interesting to find, you know, to see that they found that in the gut and then also find similar associations in the urin, um, urinary microbiome. Uh, so next we were interested in clustering and would they highlight the patterns we found? So we used DMM clustering um, and we identified eight clusters, which I'm showing here. Again, these are stacked bar plots. Uh, the samples were clustered by composition. So a good example of that is when you look at cluster six, you see that um, it's dominated by this dark green bacteria, which is Neisseria. Uh, and cluster seven, for example, is dominated by Staphylococcus. Uh, so next, we looked at the clinical characteristics of each um, urotype or cluster. And we did find significant differences between the BMIs of each cluster. However, no other significant associations were found. Um, taking a closer look, um, here I'm showing on the X, we have all of the eight urotypes. On the Y, um, it's the percent of samples, and we've separated again by BMI grouping, so healthy weight, overweight, and obese. Um, and I really want to draw your attention to clusters five and seven, because for the most part, both the healthy weight and obese percentages hover around 20%. However, that changes drastically when looking at urotype five and seven. Here's a different look at this, at the same data. Um, I think it's a bit easier to see how uh, clusters five and seven really change when looking at um, the healthy weight and obese. Um, and so you can see that if an individual has a composition, a urinary microbiome composition more similar to five, then that person, or I guess that man would be more likely to be obese than if he had a composition more similar to cluster seven. Um, and then lastly, tying this back into Dialister, um, you can see that cluster five, you know, has the most obese men in it. So it's no surprise that it also has the highest percentage of samples that contain Dialister. However, what's really interesting is that cluster eight actually has the second highest percentage of obese individuals and has no Dialister. Uh, so there's, there may be multiple compositions um, that are associated with a higher BMI. So this whole talk was supposed to be about LUTs. Uh, so, you know, we next asked, what about LUTs in the urinary microbiome? Um, to put it swiftly, we actually didn't find any differences in the diversity metrics between men with no mild and men with moderate to severe LUTs. Um, you know, but after talking to a clinician, we found out that um, they tend to kind of subcategorize lower urinary tract symptoms because that's kind of a broad description, but they actually subcategorize the symptoms into those that are irritative versus those that are obstructive. So when we separate the symptoms that way, we actually find that irritative lower urinary tract symptoms are associated with alpha diversity. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through this because we found that there were these significant interactions between BPH, BMI, and irritative symptoms, but it kind of, it, it's pretty complicated. So if we're looking at just the healthy weight population, you see men with a higher inverse Simpson index tend to have increased irritative symptoms. However, that's only in the men that do not have BPH. However, you notice that if the man does have BPH, that trend shifts. Um, but when you look at the overweight population, you actually see the opposite trend is true. And lastly, taking a look at the overweight population or the obese population, you find that BPH no longer plays as big of a role um, when it comes to uh, uh, irritative symptoms and, and the alpha diversity. And then we didn't find any associations with beta diversity. We did find uh, similar associations with obstructive LUTs. So uh, we found similar trends, especially looking at the Shannon and inverse Simpson indices, um, but we did not see um, those associations with um, uh, beta diversity. So in conclusion, um, we found that uh, the composition of the male urinary microbiome in our study was very similar to prior work. Um, we did see that age was significantly associated with beta diversity. 
And we did find a lot of these associations between BMI and the urinary microbiome. So it seems that BMI really impacts the composition as well um, as diolister perhaps playing a role with BMI there. Um, and then we did find those really complex interactions between um, LUTs, BMI, and BPH, um, which we think are, are things to be considered. So we think that this is foundational work um, for understanding the urinary microbiome in aging men, and we believe it will hopefully inform future study design. Uh, so I'm a little over time, but uh, here are some acknowledgments. Um, of course, my collaborators um, with this project, as well as Lisa Carstens, who is my mentor in grad school, um, uh, other members of the Carstens lab, as well as the biomedical engineering department uh, in my funding source. Uh, and then here's my contact info if you want to get in touch. Thank you.